March the 17th, 2021. Normally I do the introduction to the videos from the back garden, but today I'm out on the sports centre, Birchwood Estate, housing estate, which sprang up in the 1970s. It's about one mile from home and two and a half miles from Lincoln, southwest of Lincoln. Though I think the housing estate now is part of Lincoln. In 1940 to 46, this was RAF Scanningthorpe, Bomber Command Base. It was a Class A airfield with three runways. The main runway, 2,000 yards. This piece of concrete I'm standing on was part of the main runway, which came from the north to the south. It's home for several squadrons, including 50 Squadron, 455 Royal Australian Air Force Squadron, 61, 619 and 463. A total of 208 aircraft failed to return after taking off from RAF Skellingthorpe. These include 15 Amdons, 6 Avro Manchester and 187 Avro Lancaster were lost after leaving Skellingthorpe. During the first 1000 bomber raid on May 1942, Flying Officer Leslie Manser was awarded posthumously a VC, a Victoria Cross, while flying an Avro Manchester bomber from RAF Scallingthorpe. You can hear here, at the moment the Red Arrows are practicing, but along here would have been the sound of Merlin engines. And talking about Merlin engines, I've received more video from Brad to do with the repair and servicing of the Merlin engines. With the assistance of Martin and here we are today, Nev. CRM refitting. This is in order to establish the correct clearance on the bevel gear at the front here. We are adjusting this at the moment. And the reason the CRM came off in the first place is because earlier Bradley discovered that this nut here had cracked. We have replaced it now with a nice shiny new one. So we're just reassembling, but in the process, readjusting the backlash on the bevel gear that drives the CRM assembly. Morning, everybody. At the moment, I'm just numbering up all the caps and the pedestals on this CRM off B bank of number two engine. And the reason for that is, during our checking procedures on this, uh, it was discovered by Mr. Whit Mr. Bradley that um, the hole in the nose end of the camshaft here, that should be drilled to allow the oil through into the separator plate on the gear, this is the gear here, um, hasn't been drilled. So if you look very, very carefully in here, there should be a small hole there okay well that corresponding hole should be drilled in the camshaft as well this is part of the rolls-royce assembly procedure when you fit this it hasn't been done there is no hole in the camshaft in order to drill that we have to take the whole camshaft out so that's what we're doing at the moment right O'Neill. as you can see the camshaft has been removed from the crm and we are now clocking the camshaft to see how true it is you observe the Dial test indicator there, you'll see it's on zero at the moment and I'm just turning it very slowly by hand to see how true the camshaft actually is and look, oh we've got one thou so far two thou two thousandths of an inch over the entire length of this camshaft and it's coming back now round to zero so all good as the service limit is twenty thou so here we are with the Rolls-Royce Merlin camshaft you can see on the end here, the engineer's blue, where we have blued the inside of the gear and put it onto the end of the taper on the camshaft. The taper is what drives the cam. So once the bolt is tight, 75 foot pounds or thereabouts, 
then that's what drives the camshaft. It's not driven by the Woodruff key, that's merely to make sure it's aligned correctly. The torque is transmitted via the taper, which is why it's so important that more than 90%, according to the Rolls-Royce specification, of the area of that taper matches the blue. So basically, on inspection of this, it's well over 90%. This is Satis. Morning Neville. This morning we have completed the operation to drill the ore through a hole in the end of the camshaft. This is a Rolls-Royce service um, job, i.e. camshaft supplied without the hole if it's a replacement part and you have to fit the gear and align the hole and drill it. So quite nerve-wracking really. Supposed to be 75 thou hole, but there is a tolerance on that, but it has to be in the right place. And there was no hole in this camshaft, and now there is. So Brad and I are now gonna reassemble the cam, put it back in the CRM, and hopefully put it back on the engine. Good morning. As you can see here, I am lapping the nut, so to speak. We have to get exactly the right loading on the nut using the torque wrench, but then each of these slots is where the tab washer needs to fit. And obviously the tab washer has to line up exactly with the slot in order to use it. The problem being, however, that at the moment it doesn't line up when it's in the correct torque range. So we have to just take a little bit off the face of the nut in order to make it a selective fit so that we can knock the tab washer over. The torque range is 75 to 100 pound foot. And at the moment it doesn't line up, but it soon will. So we are about to um, time up the camshaft on the A-bank on this uh, Merlin on number two on the Lancaster. In order to achieve that, one first of all disconnects the drive, uh, uh, the, the drive vertical drive that comes up the rear of the cylinder head here. As you can see, this is very uh, nicely held out of, uh, up in the air by these surreptitious use of elastic bands. Then we set uh, one of the two inlet valves on um, number six cylinder, A6, up to 17 thousandths of an inch using this special Rolls-Royce feeler gauge. So the normal valve clearance on this will be 15 thou, but we've set it to 17 with this special tool. And then Mr. Bradley, We'll be turning the front of the engine using the turning tool and I will be measuring the valve clearance uh, until it nips at three thousandths of an inch. When it nips at three thousandths of an inch, we are in the, should be in the correct position and Brad will check the timing annulus underneath to see if the valve timing is correct or not. Okay, so we're getting ready to reinstall propellers on the engine There's two engines today hopefully this one which is number three and number two first clean the spline get all the old grease off clean the cone and then brad will be re-greasing it but not the cone but not the cone the cone must remain dry because unbelievably that is what transmits the torque from the engine into the propeller not the spline And I have spark plug cleaning time now. So this is a plug as removed from number two engine. As you can see, even just with the uh, degreaser we use on it, it's already pretty clean. So we're not gonna blast this one. All we're gonna do is put it in the machine and blast it with air to, to uh, dry it off. Get out of there, screw it to this adapter here. Put this lead down there, turn the pressure up here, and 
and look through that little window. That's a nice flat consistent spark. We're happy with that. So that'll uh, be put in the pile. Put with a, uh, a silica gel bag ready for refitting.